Okay, so we are going to bring in our first couple guests. How we typically do these more formal open mic debate challenges is I will have somebody on deck and then also somebody who's directly uh, engaging. And so I will bring in the first two critics. We got Mr. Anderson and Jackson Rowe. Jackson, you're going to be on deck over here. And Mr. Anderson will be the first to engage Joe and John. So Mr. Anderson, you're definitely no stranger to open mic debates and debates in general. So it is great to have you for this. Uh, firstly, how you doing tonight? And what's the first topic you'd like to discuss? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing good, uh, Donnie, and thanks for having me on. And uh, uh, John and Joe, it's nice to meet you guys. And um, <clears throat> I guess, uh, by way of introduction, uh, my name is Mr. Anderson, and I am mean to people on the internet. Um, I'm always very polite about it, though. I just tend to sometimes ask sort of tough questions. And by the way, to the viewers, if that's something you enjoy watching or you want to learn how to do it yourself, then well, you might like my content. So keep an eye out. I'm on this channel a lot, and at some point I might even throw it up on a channel. Nothing yet, though. But <clears throat> what I wanted to talk to you, fine gentlemen, about is microfossils. Now, I've heard many people talk many times about the ordering of the fossil record. And I believe you both said uh, on a number of occasions that it can be explained by a combination of several factors. And I just wanna make sure that uh, I've got that correct. So my understanding is that um, those factors are in general, uh, environment, mobility, and intelligence. And we'll go through what those are uh, in a moment. Um, but is that generally accurate? Maybe I'll just ask Joe. Is that generally accurate in terms yeah, I of... Think we, I think we may have lost John there. Has John dropped off completely, Donnie? Yes, I don't see him backstage. I think he might have accidentally oh, left the studio. Yeah, but we can definitely... He's, he's calling me one second. So. Okay. <laughs> no <laughs> worries. And we might be... Uh... We occasionally have um, issues with John and technology, so bear with me. No I worries. Had an entire... Mr. Anderson, okay, hold on. Hold on to that question. I'll uh, put Joe on mute and let the audience know as we're, we're getting more and more people. What we're doing is we just finished a uh, brief opening statement. Actually, I see John, he's back. Okay, we just finished a brief opening statement from Joe. We're now going to interact with our first two guests, Mr. Anderson, Jackson Rowe, and then uh, John, he'll be giving a brief presentation. And then that's when we're gonna bring everybody else in. So this is gonna be a comprehensive night of discussion. John, good to have you back, brother. You left us. Good. I don't know what happened there, but I disappeared. That's the internet for you. <laughs> the way it is, isn't it? No worries at all. And so, so Joe, let me, sorry, go ahead. Okay. I think uh, uh, Joe or John, I think it was more so directed at, at Joe there. So Joe, if you wanted to kick us off or have Mr. Anderson. Yeah, no, sorry. Can you, sorry, can you repeat the question again for me? Sorry, I didn't. Yeah, let me just recap and make sure that John is yeah, um, right with us. So, so um, John, I was just saying to Joe that uh, what I wanted to talk about is the microfossil record. Um, and I understand in terms of the ordering of the fossil record that um, both of you uh, and, and many other creationists as well rely on three main uh, mechanisms to, uh, to explain the ordering of the fossil record. And that is uh, the um, environment, um, mobility, and intelligence. Um, so by environment, what I mean, let's just talk about the one at a time. Um, by environment, what I mean is that, you know, fossils like clams are going to be found on the lowest layers because well, they, they started at the lowest layers, like the bottom of the ocean. And so that's where they got buried. And then fish, and then as waters rise, amphibians, and then terrestrial creatures, and then finally things that lived like high up in the trees, like small mammals and birds. That's one of the uh, mechanisms that you guys think um, order or, or account for the ordering of the fossil record. Is that fair? Maybe I'll just ask uh, if, how about if I just, we just let Joe answer and then um, John, if you disagree with Joe's answers, then you can jump in. Is that something? Yeah, right. Sure. Okay. I would um, ultimately take issue with that as a, as a generalization, mainly because that generalization tends to come from people, including creationists, who would take um, the geological column um, as it stands and effectively say, this is the flood order. And, and put it straight in like that. I don't think that it works exactly like that. Um, for starters, as uh, 
several secular geologists have pointed out the geological column doesn't exist anywhere on the planet um when i was doing my degree in geology <laughs> the um professor my overseeing professor when we went to one particular location in norfolk uh where you have effectively the cretaceous chalks which are touching the pleistocene glacial deposits so you're, you're missing approximately 60 million years in there and I asked him, so how do we know where the rest of the geological column comes in? The essential answer was you need to go around the world and try and piece it together. And effectively trying to do that is like trying to take a book that has had no um, page numbers and has been spread across the world and you don't speak the language. So there's a huge amount of interpretation that goes into the geological column on its own uh, before you even start to piece it together, which has been pieced together to see life on Earth over millions of years. So I don't I wouldn't All say right. that it automatically I'm fits. Stop you there, sir. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm very sorry to be rude. Um, I'm, I'm going to stop you there because the question that I asked you was whether or not you thought that environment was one of the factors that are used to uh, explain the ordering of the fossils that we do find in the geologic column. And as to whether or not the entire geologic column exists, I have a feeling that Jackson is going to be able to uh, give you, I don't know, five or six examples of places where there are, where the entire geologic column does exist, but that's not what I'm here to do right now. I'm asking you a very simple question. My understanding is that whether or not, like, look, when I say geologic column, I'm not referring to the entire geologic column. Would you agree with me that there are layers of dirt as you dig into the ground, and as you dig deeper, those layers change, and you find different fossils at different layers? Do you agree with that? Uh, in essence, yes. Okay. That's what I mean by the geologic column. So when I use the word geologic column, you'll now understand what I mean, right? Yeah. Okay. I see where you're going. So you're coming from the idea purely of just, just effectively layers. I'm just talking about layers. I'm saying there's an order as we dig down and consistently we're going to find certain animals buried closer to the surface than other animals or, you know, yeah, animals. Is that, is that fair? You agree with that? Mm-hmm. Okay. And one of the explanations for the order in which we find them is environment, right? Uh, so effectively, so you mean in terms of you're going to find marine fossils where marine fossil creatures were and plant fossils where plant fossils were and that kind of concept. No, what I mean, what I mean is that you're going to find, uh, you're going to find clams and, you know, animals that lived at the bottom of the sea at the lowest layers because they lived at the lowest layers before the flood. Mm -hmm. And then as you go up, you're going to find amphibians. And then as you go up further, you're going to find terrestrial creatures. And then as you go up further, you're going to find things like uh, things that lived in the trees, like birds and stuff like that. And that's one of the explanations, one of three major explanations the creationists like yourself refer to when we talk about the ordering the fossil record. Right. Joe, Joe, can I just jump in here? Because uh, a, I've got to warn you, my, my internet seems to keep coming and going. So while I've still got you on, um, I'll give you my experience with the geologic layers, no matter where you go. Let's take Murawai over in New Zealand, where I take field trips every time I go there, which has volcanic stuff at the top, magnificent volcanic formations, and then massive amounts of shale and uh, fossil bearing content, etc. Now, here is my experience, and I'm sure Joe will back this up from where he's, he is usually mostly. In the 3,000 feet of, of sediment that's there, here's what you find. Fossil pine trees, fossil clams and brachiopods, and fossil forams. Uh, but the interesting thing is that the, the trees are from a terrestrial environment. The clams, which are mixed in with them, are from a marine environment. And the forams and the radiolarians are only found living at 3,000 metres deep. Right now, we have them mixed up. And my experience is there's no such thing as saying this will only have marine fossils in it. This has terrestrial fossils. It just doesn't work like that. The real geologic strata are mixed in every case that I've been able to find them. Joe, what do you say about that? Yeah, and that's the that's the point I was trying to make. You, you have this 
picture of your sea life kind of creatures, complex, uh, simple to complex type creatures from the bottom layers going up. And oftentimes you'll find um, even even sometimes creation geologists effectively saying, oh, these are environments, this has been buried down below in the sea, this has been buried further up. But your entire geological column as a complete unit is turned upside down in the sense that you don't have mix, uh, environments that are solely, purely one environment or the other. You can find dinosaur stuff buried right next to fossil fish. So you have a mixed environment throughout the geological record. Okay, so what you guys are telling me is that there is no ordering to the fossil record, that it is not the case and it is not fair to say that you're going to find one type of creature at one layer and that if you go up a little bit or down a little bit that the types of creatures that you're going to find change. I is that think what you're telling me? I think that if there is going to be any uh, ordering in the fossil record, it will have less to do with environment and more to do with, A, the type of sediment that is able to preserve the creatures and or plants. For mm -hmm. instance, uh, coal seems to be, uh, or uh, one of the requirements for coal formation uh, it seems to be the presence of clay. If there mm -hmm. is no clay, there's no presence of coal. So that means if, even if you have trees being buried where there's no coal pr uh, clay presence, you're not going to get coal. Um, likewise, if you study the way, way that water works, particularly when it's flowing, uh, different um, uh, different speeds of water. Uh, water already has layers in it. You have different currents, different layers of water, which is going to carry different types of fossils and therefore bury different types of fossils. So, so the only sorry, I'm not sure I understand you. I understand your first point. I'm not sure I understand your second point. So what are you telling me with respect to uh, water? You're saying that that water changes in the way that water flows Water uh, so already has water already that because it's gonna it's gonna you know where there are, there are different ways that sediment forms depending on the water flow. So like you can tell whether something's a fluvian or a lacosian or a, uh, an ocean environment based on whether or not it forms you know this type of ripple or that type of ripple. Is that what you're telling me? Is that no, that's no, the, no. the ways that you tell what kind of fossils it is? Not a, no, not that type of fossils it is, but the type of fossils that are likely to be preserved is going to be dependent on the type of sediment that they're being buried in. The type yeah, I got of the type of sediment part. What's the, the second the, one you the said? Type of let me say the type of sediment that is being transported in water depends on things like the speed of water, the way mm -hmm. that the water is traveling, the volume of water that is in that particular current. So when mm -hmm. you look at the Jurassic sediments in northern Queensland, and John can comment mm -hmm. on this you are dealing with a predominant sandstone. Uh, so the trees that are buried inside not only are a massive log jam that cover uh, almost a third of Australia, but they are actually buried in, preserved in silica next to boulders. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. no coal to be found there. So right. the only ordering I would say would be uh, that you can see is based more on the way that it's been deposited rather than an environment or indeed a, a, a sequence of life on earth. Joe, okay, so you don't agree then, then just, uh, just a second, John, because I want to nail this down with Joe. So you don't agree then that if we looked at um, that if we look at a given environment, that unless the sediment changes in type, that the creatures that we're going to find at different layers are going to change as we go up and down. You think that that's not true and that it's only going to change if you see a change in the type of sediment, which would indicate a change in the type of water flow. Is that what you're telling me? Uh, well, you're still uh, effectively attributing the. So you you seem to be coming from the idea that you have different time frames in the different sediments. I never uh, said anything about different time well, frames. No, I no, want to no, know no, how you explain the fossil records ordering. The fossil. I want to know first off. I want to know. Tell me this. Let's just nail this down. Do you agree with me that there is an order to the fossils that as you go up? or down in the layers of the earth that the types of creatures that you find will change whatever the reason for that may be do you agree that that is a thing that exists in the world well uh, can, can i just jump in here having lectured in geology you have in your head an abstract view of the world that doesn't order. exist really out there hence consult professor derek Ager, who's not coming from a creation perspective and the sort of concept joe's getting across like remember highway 30 cut that i take you to joe in tennessee with both the polystrate trees and the coal and as i found a, a section there where i brought back to australia to get it beautifully prepared and presented from museum quality i found brachiopods marine brachiopods in the coal along with the fossil trees and just up the road there are fossil sharks 
Now, you can actually start with the picture in the textbook of simple fossils up to complex, but all of that is a result of Charles Lyell, Nicholas Steno, the modern world putting it in textbooks in pretty pictures, and you asking questions about a world that doesn't exist. You're right. so so John, I don't, no, I, I, John's well. asked the, or John's answer a question. Let me let me talk to him for a second. I'll get back to you. So, John, what you're telling me then, and I just want to make this crystal clear because we can go through piles and piles and piles of documentation that shows that there are different animals at different layers. You know this full well. Both of you know that there is a pattern of simple to complex from the Cambrian to the Cretaceous to the Mesozoic eras to today, that there are different animals found at different depths. Don't tell me that you don't know that. Are you telling me honestly that there's no ordering to the fossil record? Really? What you find is the ordering is a result of our brains using Charles Lyell's theories based on Nicholas Steno, who said the bottom layer got there first and away it went, and you end up with your geologic column, which Sir, is I'm not suggesting to you that the bottom layer got there first. Well, that's I, the I, 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 want to I just want to jump in for the audience sake, though, because there was a little bit of crosstalk there. I'm not sure if the last sentence of John got fully heard. So, John, right, if you repeat, could reiterate, so, it's ahead, okay. John. John, if you could reiterate your last point there, then we'll throw it over to Mr. Anderson. Okay. Again. As I said, most people do not appreciate that if we go and we find a brachiopod, we label it as marine. Usually, if you're writing a paper, you will ignore the fact that it's found in coal because it doesn't fit your theory, right? And so it's the theory of the geologic column, which you're talking about, not the facts of where you find them. So you go to the middle of Wales and you'll find trilobites at the top. You come to Australia and you find them way down the bottom and all of a sudden you have to invent the Precambrian because it doesn't fit with the geologic view that you have of England, right? So these are theoretical constructs yeah. and you're asking questions about a theoretical world, not a real world. So, sir, let me be clear then. In the real world, not the theoretical world, if you dig down into the earth and you find fossils, as you find those fossils and in various places across the world, you are going to find similar fossils at similar layers. Those layers are going to be at similar depths. The depths are gonna vary, the fossils are gonna vary, but you're gonna find an order in the real world, not in theory, in the real world, there is an ordering to the fossil record. Isn't that true? I'd suggest that's why we had to invent the idea of index fossils to help us do that. But then you have to invent your own index fossils for Australia versus Wales because you find it does not match. So the answer to my question is yes, there is a pattern, right? Uh, there are multiple patterns. Mm -hmm. All right. And that pattern is that there is a certain order in which fossils appear, right? Well, no. if you're going to try and order something, you have to have a preconceived idea in the way that you want to order them. Much like I'm if you're going to order your socks together. You, you know, because you're putting two different points together. The first one, you're saying there are creatures that, A, change between layers. Yes, there's no denying that. Okay, Thanks. but the moment there are creatures between layers, but the moment you try and argue that they form some kind of order, Right, as in whether you want that to be simple to complex, whether you want that to be Australia to Wales or whatever you want to go, it is true that you can find um, certain creatures in one type of rock, certain creatures in another type of rock. But the moment you try and put that into an order, you're already buying into a preconceived idea, which is based on Charles Lyell's idea, based off of Nicholas Stino's idea, as we've said before, where you are now applying an order to it. So changes of differences of creatures don't in automatically imply an order. Okay. I think we're I think we're close here. So, as a first step, you will both agree to me, you will both agree with me that there are different layers in the earth and that in those different layers there are different creatures. Right? Um well you you haven't said anything. I mean, that would be true regardless of how the rocks got there. That's right. That's right. I'm not even trying to say anything controversial. All I want you to admit is that there are layers and that in those layers, the different layers correspond to different creatures. Can you give me that no. at least? No, no, not correspond no. to different creatures. You're going to find different creatures in different layers, right? 
Go ahead with what point you're trying to make that. Point, that's that the point I'm statement. trying to make is there are different creatures in different layers, and I want you to agree to that so that we can move forward. Otherwise, we're going to go around here again. Um, like you guys are trying to deny that. Like I, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Honestly, this isn't the, the the fight that I expected to have with you. I'm flabbergasted at the notion that you guys would suggest that the that the uh, morphology of the fossils that you find as you move up and down the geologic column do not change. Well, Whether many you of guys, them I'm sure you have many explanations for it. Many the of the, many of the fossils, the morphology doesn't change. Pardon? Pardon? You can find many of them. The fossils, the morphology doesn't change. You can sure. find stromatolites that are supposedly 3.7 billion years old, and you find them living off the coast of Australia today. And all okay. up and down to the geological column, they don't change. Right. Same so with for some of them, it doesn't change. Clam, right? Same with, you can go on. Sure. For some of them, it doesn't change. And for some of them, it does, right? Are you meaning change from one creature into another? Or you I'm mean not asking you to accept evolution. All I'm asking you to accept is that as you move up and down in depth, that the creatures you find change. Come on, guys. This is an easy one. You know this. It is, it is an this. easy question, but the things you're implying are, first of all, that the bottom layer that you think of got there first, followed by the next one, followed by the next one. Now, that's where Joe and I will totally first. dispute what you're saying. I'm not saying it got there first. I'm just saying it's deepest. I'm saying there's no, certain this, kinds of you creatures. You are saying it deepest. got there first, then, whether you admit it or not. Deepest I'm not means first you, in the geologic mind. Sir, I'm not asking you to agree with me that it got there first. I certainly think that, but you're free not to. All I want us to agree is that there's that you're going to find things like clams, for example, at the deepest layers. You're going to find you find uh, them at the topmost you know, layers as well. You are going to find them on the topmost layers as well. So the whole the whole question is arbitrary. Deepest doesn't equal deepest in time. Nor right. does it necessarily you're going to find different creatures. Well, deep. A little bit of cry. I just want to make sure, Joe. Joe, feel Go free ahead. to finish your thoughts. We'll Go throw ahead. it right back to you, Mr. Anderson. Go ahead, Go ahead Joe. So again, Joe, sorry, I just wanted to hand it to you, Joe, if you wanted to finish your thoughts there and point. I just want to make sure. Oh, I was only just saying the fact that you're, you're, you're deepest. When you say deepest, you don't doesn't necessarily mean deepest in time, nor does it mean deepest in actual um, reality, because you sometimes find the deepest rocks are on the surface. Right. So the only way you they become the deepest rocks is when you take those rocks and put them into a philosophical construct, which is the geological column, where mm -hmm. they become the deepest rocks based purely on the idea that the bottom layer got there first, the top layer got there last. So even I'm just not. using the terminology deepest refers back to that philosophical construct. Sir, I'm not asking you to accept that philosophical construct. I'm just, we are stuck here on first base where you guys won't admit that there are different animals that you find at the deepest layers than the ones that you find shallow. And, and, and you know what? In any given, in any given, just let me finish my question. Before I answer. I'm still talking. Thank you. In any, Jill, in any pile of dirt, if you find there are particular creatures that if you find them, they're going to be deeper than other given creatures, right? Consistently. Isn't that true? No, because you find these creatures throughout the geological column. We've already made that point. So, so you're sir, not you're, dealing you're with deepest here, creatures you're tell necessarily me, being at the top. All right, you're going to sit here and you're going to tell me that it is equally likely for us to find a mammoth skeleton at a depth that is, let's say we find a mammoth skeleton and a tyrannosaurus skeleton in the same column of dirt. You're going to tell me we're going to be equally likely to find the mammoth skeleton at the bottom and the tyrannus skeleton above it as vice versa? Is that what you're going to tell me? Well, Joe, I've never found a mammoth skeleton, I which I not. could, but I found plenty of beds where that no matter what strata you think you're in, the fossils are mixed environments. They All are right. land, sea, and deep sea mixed environments no matter where you are oh. so your whole construct you're trying to get is messed up right from the start all right you know what let's do it this way then johnny can i share a screen sure <clears throat> and i'm looking at the clock <clears throat> you got about six yeah. more minutes mr anderson well, i mean you know if uh, if you if, if you want if you want me to actually get to the points that i wanted to discuss rather than us discussing whether or not there is such a thing as layers in the geologic column then you're going to need to give me more time but that's entirely up to you hey, hey we started with layers you moved on to changes within layers and deepest to top that's where we got hung up 
Well, here, let's get unhung up then. So you'll agree with me that there are different creatures at the deepest layers, however they got there and whenever they got there. And then there are different creatures as we go up, right? No, Come that's on, what guys. we've been arguing over over the past 10 minutes. <laughs> Is that what I said true? Can we move on? Basically, it's not true. It's your interpretation <laughs> based on Lyell, based on Steno. Okay, well, we're going to have to do this the hard way then, you guys, I guess. So, uh, yeah, Donnie, let me share a screen then. I mean, this is foolish, you guys. But all right. If you're looking to share a screen, Mr. Anderson, just let me know when. I don't see it at the bottom yet. And um, <clears throat> I'm just letting people know who's backstage. Uh, we're going to have priority with, with those that are skeptics. So Jackson Rose on deck. Then we're going to be throwing it back to John for a short presentation. And then I've got uh, a few others backstage. So uh, Anderson, I do see it now. All right. Turn it Go on. ahead. So you guys, you'll agree with me that whenever we find one of any of these creatures in the same level of dirt, as in the same column of dirt as any one of the other creatures in this list, that the ones on the bottom of this list are going to be the ones you find deeper in the dirt. Can, can you blow that picture up at all any bigger? I don't I'm know. struggling to see it on my screen. Maybe oh. zoom in if you can. But if oh, that's, that's, better. that's, that's it, that's better. better. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You go. So you got yeah. Right. So we, these yeah. Right, guys. Wikipedia index fossils. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what I said is true, isn't it? So what were you saying that the bottom layers? You're I'm saying that if you look and you dig a hole in the dirt, you find any two of these creatures, that those two creatures are going to appear in this order, right? 99.99 times out of 100, right? Um, let, let me comment on where I am sitting right now. I'm sitting on top of metamorphic rock. Uh, which is regarded as uh, Carboniferous, Silurian, or Devetian, depending on which book you read. And uh, it's intruded by granite about 30 kilometres away, which uh -huh. is the same age as the volcanic tuff right alongside of it and sitting on it. By the Sir, I'm going to stop you right writing. there because you're not going to find any fossils in either of those kinds of rock. One is metamorphic and one is igneous. You find fossils in sedimentary rock, so I appreciate an answer to my question. Well, you're actually you wrong. An animal, oh, I, 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 I'm going to do it. Mr. I just want to make sure John can finish his thoughts. John, we'll throw it back to you. Go ahead. You're absolutely wrong because it depends on the greater metamorphism because I dig up trilobites out of the metamorphic Silurian uh, and they're still preserved. The metamorphic rock contains graptolites and all sorts of things where I am. But you'll find when you go up a bit further, you find the coal sitting on top of it regarded as uh, Triassic. And then all of a sudden you're at the surface of the ground. Uh, yeah. We're here now. Sir, that's you really normal, afraid of this question. normal stuff that you find unless you do what you do and believe in that diagram, which is not the real world. So, sir, have you? So, sir, are you really that afraid of this simple admission that these fossils, if you find any two of them in the same hole, that they're going to appear in this order? You run from that question. You refuse to answer it four times now. They do in your diagram, but in the real world, you find sediments mixed with uh, trees and, and, and deep sea creatures and, and clams all together. So your yeah, diagram is too sir. oversimplified. It's very interesting. It doesn't answer the very simple question I asked you. I'll ask you again. If you were to dig a hole and you were to find any two of the creatures on this list, they're going to appear in the order you see on this list, right? No. Really? That's that's an interpretation. It's not a reality. OK, so you don't believe that there is any order to the fossil record, then that order is an interpretation based on already existing concepts of how the that's rock interesting, structure. sir. It's still not responsive to my question. I asked you a simple question. Do you believe that there is an ordering to the fossil record? Yes, but not your order. Oh, not my order. So you don't believe that this order that I'm showing you on this screen you don't believe that this order is an order that you're going to see in the ground? No. Well, you're not much of a... I don't know why we should, we, should, we should listen to anything you say when you're not even uh, uh, able to admit uh, 
like these are basic facts. So I, I'll ask Joe then. Maybe Joe, you'll give me a more responsive answer or a more useful answer. Sir, uh, can you tell me whether or not you're going to find an order to the fossil record? Not that order. <laughs> We're going around in circles here because if you dig a hole and you find a fossil which matches a fossil in another place, your automatic assumption is that it is going to be of A, the same layer, B, the same period in time. So you're instantly putting it into a system which is based on time. So your order is based on time in the first place. All right, let's try this one more time, sir. Let's say, let's give a particular example. Donnie, can you put that back up on the screen again? Sir, if I find, uh, for example, I find a pectin gibbous in a hole, and then I keep digging, right? And I dig down and down and down, and then I find Paradoxides pinus, uh -huh. right? I'm going to find, I'm not, I'm not going to be digging in 99.999 times out of 100. When I dig that hole, I'm going to find the pectin gibbous first, and then I'm going to find the paradox. Uh, Paradoxides pinus, right? Not necessarily. It depends where you're digging. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I see you'll 99, find that, 99 sometimes times out of 100. Right? Right. Hey, 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 Mr. A little bit of, I, I want to make sure Joe can, can finish his points. I'm going to hand sir, it to you, Joe. Feel free yeah, to address this. Sir, nine, sir, 99 times out of 100, you're going to find the pectin gibbous first and then the paradoxides pinus, right? Okay, no. over to you, Joe. No, because you can start digging the hole and find the pectin, and then you can find Precambrian rocks, and you're got no fossils at all. Other times you don't find any of the pectin and you go down and you find the paradoxy. So the only way you're going to actually piece them together is if you assume that the so-called, as you've said many times, deepest fossils got there first based off of an interpretation that is based on time and simply then piece them together. So, sir, you're telling me that I'm not going to consistently find the order of index fossils, which is, a, I mean... Like, you understand that, that this is an extremely well-documented uh, uh, phenomenon, right? And can I make a comment? You no, sir, I don't think so. I, 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 I don't I'm, I'm going to jump in, Mr. Anderson, please. I want you to respect the guest. He wants to make a comment. We're at 30 minutes anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, we have to um, move on, Mr. Anderson. I gave you right, 30 you know minutes. what? Let, let's, let, me, let, me have, let me have one more turnaround on this then, okay? Okay, but so I want to respect your Please thing stop anyway. interrupting the, the moderator, okay? I'm trying to moderate right. here. I'm trying to keep things organized. John wanted to say something. John, go okay. ahead, my brother. My, my take final your time comment and is the best evidence you've shown today is that you've never dug a hole, found an order of fossils, or been to a conference on where strata boundaries are, and so you're ignorant rather than knowledgeable. You're well mm -hmm. presented, but ignorant. Mm -hmm. Thank okay, you, sir. Mr. Anderson, All right, go ahead. one more time then? You All get right. one more one more point, one more question. We got to move on because we're not going to be here I all night. We got about seven guests. To get through. Go ahead. I appreciate it. All right. So, sir, here's a diagram from a paper of somebody who has actually dug a hole, who is actually educated, who does actually know what they're talking about. And here are a whole bunch of different fossils. And there's an order. You can see here what says ranges of stratigraphically important foraminifera. You see that? Sir, you see that? Are you talking to Joe or me? Or both of us? I'm just trying I'm going to, to talk to you, John. I'm just trying I'm to talk to you, John. That's fine. I see, I see the diagrams. I had them all through my geology course. Okay, lovely. So you'll agree with me that uh, you, I, I presume you take no issue with the notion that the person who wrote this article, which is published in a journal uh, called, uh, oh, I can't even find it. Uh, which is published in a journal called Geological Quarterly. That's a respected scientific journal, isn't it? It's okay. Yeah, that's fine. But you okay. missed the point. You see, No, sir, I'm going to be the one making it. Okay, no, I'm, 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 I'm jumping in. Okay, Mr. Anderson, you had 32 minutes. You're interrupting John. After, he's been sitting patiently waiting. We're going to give John the last word. we got to move to the next guest. So, Mr. Anderson, I appreciate it. John, over to you. You get the last word on. Okay, uh, again, I have to make one very important point. The guy who did that, bless his heart for digging holes, bless his heart for mapping forums, but he believes already in the geologic column, which is based on the concept that the rocks change constantly content all up and down. That's probably the best place to finish this. So um, over to your next yes, uh, Donnie. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, John Mackay, for that final word there. Mr. Anderson, I appreciate the back and forth engagement for 32 minutes.
that was good, fast paced and uh, very engaging. So with that, we are going to uh, now move 